Let's talk about Apple's feature which uses the AI capability called computer vision. And no, I'm not talking about the new Apple Vision Pro, which is the AR goggles. Instead, I'm talking about the capability of new iPhones for a long time now, which Apple has incorporated into the feature called the Neural Engine. Just recently, Apple made an announcement about including a sensitive content warning on your phone when you receive messages on iMessage. Basically, your phone is able to spot nudity in photos sent to you. The iPhone will automatically detect this and will hide the image unless you specifically acknowledge that you wish to see it. For most of you, especially the tech innocent, this seems like a fairly benign feature and you think it is nice of Apple to provide this. For someone like me who understands where this capability originates from, it is a warning to you about something I've been harping about for years now, and that is how Apple is leveraging AI on its devices. Apple is using AI to see. Apple is using computer vision. Apple is using computer vision to see what's in your environment and what is private to you. And they are justifying this with disinformation, making you think it is all safe technology. This disinformation campaign has been going on for a long time now. And some people made comments on my video saying, prove it. Well, these new technologies prove what I've been saying and yet I will be ignored. Let's delve deep into Apple's actions. Stay right there. Recently, Apple announced the sensitive content warning feature. This is the actual announcement they made. Sensitive content warning helps adult users avoid seeing unwanted nude images and videos when receiving them in messages. As with communication safety, all image and video processing for sensitive content warning occurs on device, meaning neither Apple nor any third party gets access to the content. Now, while the innocent among you don't understand the technical facility that allows this capability, let me just state up front that this is one of the things the technology called client-side scanning can do. Some of you incorrectly assume that I'm some lone wolf talking about this as a danger, that I'm some sort of conspiracy theorist. Well, let's be clear here. What I will discuss with you is something thoroughly and aggressively derided by so many in the privacy community, including the Electronic Frontier Foundation, EFF. It is discussed frequently by the renowned cybersecurity technologist Bruce Schneier and many others. Just about anyone who understands what is going on with this technology knows that Apple has added a way to beat end-to-end -end encryption on your phone and it accomplishes this by utilizing the AI on the phone to remotely perform its bidding to view your private data. And this new little feature is just proving to you that this technology exists and they use little parts of it. But don't miss out that the complete system is there and has always been there despite what you hear in the press. First, let me describe the technology involved. The piece involved with this sensitive content warning is an AI feature called computer vision. At the moment, I believe that only Apple can do this at the device side or client side. The iPhone chips are configured to make this easy to do with the introduction of the neural engine, I believe since iPhone 10. Google introduced a chipset to allow this since the Pixel 6 with their new Tensor chip. So assume that at some point, Google will be implementing this as well. I did a video on AI computer vision before and I can link it here if you're interested. Basically, computers can analyze images and distinguish its content. The AI computer vision can identify individual objects, including separating out individual faces, but it goes beyond that. AI can actually recognize emotions on faces. It can tell if someone is angry, happy, anxious. 
AI is sophisticated enough to tell a parent gender, a parent age, and even the racial or ethnic background of the face. This ability extends even further to recognizing the clothing of a person in an image or lack of it. Now, the scariest part about this capability is that the AI is already able to detect context. So for example, it can sense anxiety in the faces and of course identify aggressive movements or sexually suggestive actions. So now we're talking about AI that can really observe its environment and make judgments about it. Something that I will suggest to you now as a technical capability, but there's no actual demonstrated proof that this is already being used, is that the computer vision can be used on anything that has image data, meaning it has the potential for analyzing the environment via the camera directly. Currently, when it's used for sensitive content warnings, it specifically is being used for scanning images already saved on the device, like this feature is for incoming photos from messages. The reason I mention this is because there is no technical reason that the AI couldn't analyze the image data live from a camera or from a video. Any snapshot of an image kept in memory, whether from a frame in a video or an intermittent photo capture from a camera, is just a normal digitized image to AI software processed in memory. Now, this is an old topic and I will connect it to this technology. Over a year ago, Apple announced that it will be implementing a technology to spot objectionable photos called CSAM on your phone automatically, and that the detection of such photos would result in a referral to law enforcement. YouTube AI will flag this video if I define what CSAM is, so I will leave you to figure that out on your own. This capability, though, includes a series of other technologies that go beyond just computer vision. The basic concept is that Apple is able to create a library of instructions at Apple HQ that instruct the AI to find specific content on your phone. In this case, the technology was supposed to identify illegal CSAM photos. But the way the instructions are passed to your device was through encrypted and obfuscated patterns that your phone interprets as commands on what to search for. The unique feature about this communications capability is that if no match is found, no traffic is returned to Apple. So this allows extensive searching of all phone devices with very little internet traffic. So let's put this in a clear description. Apple has the capability to give instructions to your phone in some hidden manner. Then your phone will scan through your images and send a signal to Apple if a match is found to the search criteria. Now, Apple announced this feature as a way to identify CSAM, but it got pushback from privacy and security people all over the world. So last year, Apple pulled back its planned production release of the CSAM scanning. Thus, this specific published feature is on hold. This is part of the disinformation though. What many do not realize is that the core functionality of the phone AI to scan images has been in iOS since iOS 13. Cybersecurity folks have already detected the traffic that is generated when an image scanning API is at work on an iPhone. The actual module to do the scanning is a public API, so it is even available for other apps to use. So though Apple has now been quiet about the application with CSAM content itself, strangely, or perhaps not so strangely, lawmakers in the EU, UK, and the US have been pushing for technology to identify CSAM. Interesting. The government spy agencies have figured out a political cover for this ability for remote content spying of your phone. Hey, it is used to protect the world and the innocent from CSAM. So hey, can't be a bad thing. Let's pass all these laws to implement this in a big way. But folks, this is the evil in all this. 
The technology is not specific to CSAM. The term we in the privacy community use is called client-side scanning. This means that via remote control, some entity can instruct your phone to scan content of any type, including potentially scanning what is in the camera view and reporting that content to home base. While CSAM is considered the political cover, the actual entire purpose of this feature is a way to beat end-to-end -end encryption. Many in law enforcement and intelligence agencies have felt that they have lost control of some of the mass surveillance capability with the introduction of encrypted apps. Here's an example of what government wants. Facebook, for example, wanted to implement more end-to-end -end encryption on the platform in private messages, which already includes the uber-popular WhatsApp. But law enforcement wants to push back. Here's a letter from Bill Barr, former AG from the Trump administration, giving his two cents on the topic. Quote, more than 99% of the content Facebook takes action against, both for child sexual exploitation and terrorism, is identified by your safety systems rather than by reports from users. We therefore call on Facebook and other companies to take the following steps. Embed the safety of the public in systems designs and thereby enabling you to continue to act against illegal content effectively with no reduction in safety and facilitating the prosecution of offenders and safeguarding of victims. What this letter is suggesting, which I will make clear for you, is that Bill Barr and many in government, including those pushing this in the U.S. Senate and officials in the U.K., is that they want automated scanning of content. This is really the whole point to this. Since the FBI had the little argument with Apple about accessing a locked iPhone from the terrorist attack in San Bernardino back in 2015, Apple has been steadfastly refusing to create a backdoor to unlock the encryption on the device. If you recall that event, the FBI wanted to have Apple help them break into the iPhone of the terrorist which had a lock code. Apple got pushback from the government for refusing to support the FBI in this. I recall that people like Bill Gates was pushing for Apple to give access. But if Apple gave access to the phone, it would destroy them and their manufactured image of the phone being super safe. So right after that event, you can see in the press that three later agencies were pushing for a solution to end-to-end -end encryption. And the solution is to scan content before it is encrypted, meaning scan the device directly and locally. This was the beginning of this concept and Apple was first to implement it, client-side scanning. Scan the content before it enters some encryption app. The cover for Apple here is that no human is doing the scanning, so they can claim that they do not operate like Google. The scanning is done by an AI independently, presumably, and the AI looks only at the characteristics of the photo rather than transmitting a copy of the photo itself. Thus, they can still call themselves the privacy company. Folks, this is complete disinformation. The reality is that the ability to scan your device is not limited to any particular content. Assuming the AI computer vision of the neural engine is capable of understanding what it is seeing, then it is able to flag the content for law enforcement or some intelligence agency. In other words, Apple has enabled the next level of mass surveillance, we're now going to be kept in line by robots. In this case, the robot is your phone. So think about future applications of this. Certain content can be blocked from appearing on your phone. Just like nude images can be blocked from your device, some future application can willy-nilly stop particular posts and images from being transmitted to you at the device level in such a quiet way that no one would notice. Let's just say it's election time and some son or daughter of a candidate is implicated in a video which might influence the election. Well, it shouldn't be a big deal to have that particular content just disappear and without a warning message of any sort. 
For those worried about active surveillance, journalists having contact with sources and whistleblowers could immediately be identified by an AI-driven dragnet so quietly done that the only internet traffic is generated when a content match is detected. Can you now see why the three-letter agencies and governments are actively pushing this automated scanning technology? It is truly a way around end-to-end -end encryption and is extremely powerful. The argument from government and Apple can be that this technology cannot be hijacked by third parties. It is under the direct control of Apple only. And that part is true. This would be a completely centralized tool. It is good that it can be controlled only by one party, but it is also bad that it can be controlled only by one party. You can assume that one company acts in your best interests. This is a very powerful capability controlled by a few. This ends the potential privacy we could have gotten from end-to-end -end encryption. This alone, my friends, is the primary reason I stay away from Apple devices. And if I'm using an Apple device, I make sure it doesn't store personal content. No photos, no communications, only media consumption. Because I have no interest in participating in another element of this surveillance state. For the moment, Google has not yet incorporated this into Android itself, but of course, that is coming. When this feature does arrive on Android, we will do our utmost to make sure such a capability cannot be implemented on a de-Google phone, and we will always strive to find a solution. But for now, no iPhones for me, and hopefully some of you will respond and say, no iPhones for you too. Folks, my company creates products that are intended to protect our privacy. We provide phones that have no centralized control and are invisible to big tech. Our most popular device is the Brax 2 phone running Brax OS. We also have Pixel phones that have Google removed. They're called the Google phones. We have a VPN service, Bytes VPN, which is a stealth VPN in that it doesn't scream that you're on a VPN. We do not put thousands of you on a single server. We have Braxmail, which eliminates the metadata from your emails. This means no IP addresses and traces on your email that show where it came from. All these products are on the store on my app, Braxme. Come visit us there. The link is in the description. Thank you for watching and see you again soon.